Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to draw the map from the design sprint in extreme detail. The video you're about to see is one small part of our design sprint online course, where we go into crazy detail on exactly how to run and sell design sprints. So really hope you enjoy it. If you wanna know more about the Design Sprint online course, down below there's a one and a half hour free web class where you can learn a lot more about Design Sprints and a lot more about the online course. If you have any questions about the map or the Design Sprint process or what other videos you'd like to see, just let us know down below in the comments. I hope you enjoy this. We've spent the first morning of the first day of the sprint really hearing about all the different kinds of problems and focusing on the problems that we really want to try and tackle in the sprint. And now we're going to really find a particular area of the product to actually focus on that we think might solve some of those problems. And that's done in the map and the target. And there's an update as well here in the Design Sprint 2.0. In the original book, a lot of focus and a lot of time was given to drawing the map with the group. And what we found after hundreds, doing hundreds of sprints was that the more time we gave to the map didn't necessarily lead to a better outcome. And all the map is really for is finding that target area that we want to focus on and aligning the group so we all have the same picture in our minds when we're talking about the, the product or the system that we're working with. So we've really reduced the time given to the map uh, to somewhere between 25 to 45 minutes instead of really half a day. So that's the main difference with the map, but I'll still go through the actual process with you now. So the map can really be something as simple as this, like really just showing the steps a user goes through or the, the process flow of a product, really just so that everyone can see the main steps that happen, not to really get into the granular detail. So this is a nice example of a super simple map. So the exercise is generally pretty simple, but it can be really tricky for you as a facilitator to actually do. So I'm gonna give you a few extra tips as well. Uh, but the general exercise is that you start with the marker in your hand, write the actors on the left, the users, the people who interact with the system, the objective of the users on the right. So what's the end of their journey? What are the things that they need to do and then complete that journey through your product or service? And then fill in the actual steps in between. So how do they discover your service? How do they learn more about it? And what are the steps involved with actually using the service? And really try and do this just in the time frame that you've decided. So we've got suggestions for you in our facilitators checklist that you have as part of this masterclass, uh, but you can also adjust the time. If it's a simpler service and you think you can do it in shorter time, try giving it a shorter time and seeing if you can get it finished. And really just trying to do all of this in the time that's given um, otherwise, you can find that you just go into too much extra detail if you give it more and more time and it's not actually ending up being useful. So let's look at how this actually applies in our example in Jake's Magic Laundry Service. So we start by writing the actors on the left. In this example, we've got the customers who need to get their laundry done and uh, us as a company. So Jake's Magic Laundry Service, Jake's Delivery Drivers. So us on the other side. And this could be, you could have more actors than this, but it's often best to try and start as simply as possible. And then the objective. So for Jake's Magic Laundry Service, the objective of the customer is to end up with their clothes delivered back to them clean. So they have clean clothes. Really as simple as this, as simple as you can make this, it will be just easier for you as a facilitator and for your whole team in the long run. Then it really helps to fill in what happens in between if you write these headings, discover, learn, and use, really then help you just fill out those things in between. And in Jake's laundry service, uh, you as a facilitator then would be standing at the board and really starting to put some suggestions down to really help people keep moving. Your job as a facilitator in the whole sprint is to keep people moving and get, the, get people to actually bring out the problems and solutions and thoughts themselves, but you can start this off, and it's a really great example of how to do this in the map, if you start, and it's always just a suggestion, a starting point, people can then say, yep, that's right, or no, it doesn't actually happen that way, it happens like this. So you starting it off really encourages people to contribute, rather than just leaving a blank whiteboard and asking people to tell you what you should write on there. It's really great to just start things off. 
So in Jake's Magic Laundry Service, maybe we also have how do people learn more about us? There's a marketing page. Uh, then what do people do? How do they actually use it? So the customer needs to choose a time that they want you to come pick up their laundry. Then they need to hand the clothes over. Then it uh, actually gets taken away and washed. Ah, but maybe then we realize while we're writing this that maybe before that, the actual service has, uh, maybe we need to make a decision about who picks up the laundry. So you can really just start writing and then rubbing out and filling in and adding things as you go. But just try and keep writing, keep that flow. And then maybe the uh, clothes after this are dropped off back to the customer and then the customer has clean clothes. Now there might actually be a lot of other small things that are going on in here. Like the user maybe actually does need to choose what kinds of things they need to get washed. But this is not, these little extra levels of detail in all of these actions aren't necessary details. You really just need to see the main flow because the whole point of drawing this map is just to choose where the problem areas are, where is the areas that we really want to focus on so we can come up with a solution in a particular, of a particular part of the system. Then you'll go back to the how might we questions. And these were uh, really the most important challenge areas that we wanted to try and solve. This was discovered right at the very beginning of the day. Uh, what are the most important things? What would, things would have the most impact if we can really try and solve these areas? And this is how we choose the target area on the map. So we go back to the how might we questions and you as a facilitator will start with the top one, the one with the most dots or the one on the top left and start to try and place them one at a time onto the map and decide really as a group then, but you as a facilitator guiding like, do you think maybe it goes in this stage or in this stage or in this step? And then the group, uh, especially the, the experts and the decider can help you figure out really what part of the map it should go on. And sometimes there are decisions about, well, it could go in uh, right at the beginning of the journey or it could go actually right at the end. Is it, is it more about how people learn what the service does or how they actually use the service? This is a tricky thing to do, but if in doubt, your guidance here as a facilitator is if there's two spots where it could go, try placing it further to the left, further upstream, um, because usually if you find the target area and to really choose a target area of trying to solve the problems earlier in the, the user's journey, then it'll probably have a flow on effect and fix the problems further down in the journey as well. So going further to the left is usually the best choice. So once placing each how might we one at a time, you start to see where those most important problem areas and challenge areas, where, what places they fit in, in the whole system, in the whole product in the user and how they use your product. So you're really starting to see where those problem areas are. And if we look at Jake's Magic Laundry Service quickly again, we look at some of the how might we's that came up there. How might we deal with people who are not home at time of pickup? This seems to maybe belong in the pickup and wash area. So we've just got this high level of steps. We can really quickly find, figure out where that roughly belongs. The how might we statement, how might we let people know that we don't only do shirts, this one seems to be out really letting people know and where they find out what the service does. So maybe it belongs here more in the learning marketing page area. So this is really roughly how that works and you really shouldn't take more time than that, just 30 seconds per post-it note to just figure out where it's placed. The whole purpose of the map is really all about picking that target area. And it's just to find a way, a place, a particular part of our product or part of the user interaction that we can focus on when we start to come up with solution ideas. So it's really just about making sure that we're all creating solutions that are focused on one area. We're all going in that same direction. Placing the how might we is really just helps us. It helps us make it easier for us to identify that target area. So this is a few exercises really always coming back to early exercises that we did. This is an example of that where we're using something that we that came out and was exposed earlier in the sprint and we're using it to help us to make a choice about how to focus. So to actually select the target, the facilitator, you will take the marker again. A colored marker is really good just so we can clearly see it later on and decide together without as little discussion as possible um, what would be a good place 
to focus on, to come up with solutions, to really test out if a solution could work. And the same thing applies here um, about going further to the left. So when you're choosing this target area, even if there's two kind of areas with, with a lot of the problems have kind of been clustered, usually if you solve a problem further up the um, scale, up the line, it really usually solves the problem further down as well. So it's usually better to go further left. So focus on where the how might we problem statements have landed. Don't discuss too long. And if in doubt, go further to the left and try and get as narrow a target area as you can. Not, you don't wanna be circling half your map. You wanna be circling a particular area that you can focus on. So for Jake's Magic Laundry Service, even though there are a few, um, two different areas where most of the challenges fell, circling the discovery and learning um, part of the map was where we could try and solve the problems that might then flow on to um, solve problems further down the line. A great facilitation tip for you, especially for the map, but actually for a lot of other exercises too, is that the map doesn't need to be perfect or even correct. And this isn't just good for you to know, but you need to tell your team this before you start the map, as you're actually creating and drawing the map. And keep repeating this a few times because you will see when, you, when you're actually doing this that it's very, very easy for people to get hung up on wanting to get every tiny detail perfect and making sure that we have everything in the right order and maybe this is connected to that and maybe we need to add in six more steps here. Really continually reminding people while they're doing it and telling them before that this is, this is going to feel like we didn't quite finish it. Um, we really don't, don't need to make this perfect. We're just gonna do as much as we can in a certain amount of time and it will be enough. Um, we just need a high level picture, a high level understanding of the whole system. So really telling this to your team makes the whole thing go a lot smoother and removes that feeling of stress that um, people can get when they feel like they've run out of time and they haven't got everything down that they wanted to get down and there might be something missing. So now we've just actually completed the first half of the first day. And this is where we would normally have a lunch break when we're running our sprints ourselves and we're gonna be moving on in the afternoon to already start thinking about producing solutions based on our understanding of the problems we've had now. So congratulations for finishing the first half of the first day of the sprint. Whew. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it gave you everything you need to know about creating the design sprint map. And like I said, down below, there's a link to a one and a half hour web class. You can go deeper and deeper into the design sprint process. Um, and also we'll talk to you a little bit more about the design sprint online course. You know, when I say talk to you, it's gonna be about like trying to tell you that you should buy it. That's, that's what these web classes are. But hopefully there's enough free stuff on our YouTube channel for you not to feel annoyed about that. So thanks so much for watching and have a great day.